Hi everyone, I'm Christy Gorenson and welcome to Washington Grown. We are in the heart of downtown Spokane at the historic Steam Plant Square. We're going to go inside and explore just a minute, but first I want to tell you about today's show. It's about a very versatile Washington Grown ingredient that can be used in both food and beverages, barley. We're going behind the scenes at Elysian Brewery to see one of the many tasty products of barley, beer. Oh, I like that. And did you know beer has many health benefits? A resident nutritionist Craig Hunt will let us know what they are. Then we're in the kitchen with our home chef, Kristen. My son Ethan joins us in the kitchen and we make barley butternut squash risotto. Ready? Then we're flying high with an aerial applicator. We'll chat with him about crop protection and see what he does to help keep crops healthy. Aerial application is one of many tools that is used in agriculture and it's a very important tool. All that and much more on Washington Grown. Explosion of fragrance. Safety first, Safety that's my first. motto. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> oh, her bicep's bigger than mine. <laughs> Today, we're visiting one of Spokane's most historic landmarks, Steam Plant Square. Originally built in 1916, the steam plant created a low-cost, efficient way to provide heat and power to over 300 buildings throughout downtown Spokane. The plant was in use until the mid-80s and was then renovated in 1996 to become Stacks at the Steam Plant. Yeah a classic restaurant featuring a variety of Northwest cuisine, Stax is keeping its customers happy with its locally sourced high quality ingredients and eclectic atmosphere. I was lucky enough to meet Chef Andrew to see what Stax is all about. So when people come to Stax at the steam plant, what's the experience that they're going to have? They're gonna have an awesome experience. What you're gonna get is a great venue for just a dinner for two to a nice party. You know, we have a lot of banquet rooms hidden away in the place. You're gonna have food that is crafted with a lot of talent, a lot of love. We put our heart and soul into our food. Here. A lot of yes. local ingredients, I Lots hear. Lots of local ingredients, mm -hmm. yes. We uh, use P&W lentils for a lentil hummus we got coming up. We brew all our own beer here. And anytime I can source local, I do it. I want to support our local economy, our local farmers. I come from a farming background. I know how important it is to support the local farmers. Later on in the show, Andrew and I will be cooking up a unique barley dish that will keep your taste buds happy. If you've traveled through eastern Washington in the summertime, then you have undoubtedly seen barley growing. Although wheat is king here in the Palouse, barley is also important to our agricultural makeup. Cochrane Farms is one of the many farms that raise barley here in the state. Hi there, how are you? I'm oh, great, how are you? Val Thomas Matson met up with Larry Cochrane, a third generation farmer and barley grower extraordinaire. Where in the Washington are we? <laughs> We're uh, about four miles north of Colfax, Washington, which is 60 miles south of Spokane. Uh, we're kind of in the heart of the Palouse country. Just over the hill here is where I was born and raised. My brother lives in the house behind us. Uh, I live up the road in my grandfather's house wow. that was built in 1897. This is malt barley. Uh-huh. This is for making beer. We've got to keep all them craft breweries in business. Absolutely. Yes, you do. Now, how many different kind of barleys do you grow here? Well, I grow malt barley, which is one barley, and then there's a we grow feed barley. Uh-huh. Because if you notice, i got some cows around here. How long does it take for the barley to grow? And then where does it go after you harvest it? Um, this was seeded late April. Uh, it's malt barley, which I have contracted through my local co-op, and they have it contracted then to Great Western Malting in Vancouver. Can you show me uh, kind of the anatomy of a barley top? And if you notice, the heads late are downhill. Uh huh. So like a rain, we'll be able to harvest this before we can wheat because the water runs off. 
Like I said, it's a malt barley, so you've got to make sure that the kernel is not damaged. Okay. Because to make malt is they sprout the kernels. Everything I do is to raise a better wheat crop. So the barley is just a rotational crop. I call it a soil sanitizer. And then I raise malt barley because it's worth more money to me. <laughs> 60 years yeah. and counting. And counting. Like I said, I've been out here since I was four years old. Mm -hmm. And I see you've got your little combine over there. Yeah. Can we take a ride? Sure. <laughs> I love this monster, which looks almost like a bug. <laughs> Can you give us a tour, though, of what we're looking at here? Sure. Start, you've got your hand on a reel, which turns and pulls the crop. And you have a sickle bar down below that cuts it off. Uh-huh. Oh, OK. The reel pushes it into the auger. Uh-huh. The auger turns and pushes everything to the center. OK. And then everything goes up the center of the machine inside. Here we go. <laughs> okay, I have all this technology and everything is run with a joystick. So I have to remember which vehicle I'm in and which joystick I'm running so I make sure I push the right buttons. Yes, please remember that today <laughs> especially. <laughs> Next time you enjoy a craft beer, we hope you think about Larry Cochran and his Palouse barley field. To learn more about farming in Washington, visit our website at wagrone.com. I'm here with pilot Gavin Morris. He's an aerial applicator, and we're going to find out exactly what that means. What, what is an aerial applicator? We obviously has to do with planes, right? Exactly, yeah. Aerial applicator is kind of what it sounds like. A lot of people re recognize us as crop dusters. Okay. And it's just what it sounds like. We put uh, crop protection products inside these airplanes and we fly over uh, different uh, crops outside and apply the product to them and help protect them from insects and diseases and a uh, different uh, variety of problems that they might be uh, having and helping them to grow up, be healthy uh, commodities for the grower to sell. Obviously, this is very important for Washington farmers. Oh, incredibly so. Yeah, incredibly. There's. Aerial application is uh, one of many tools that is used in agriculture, and it's a very important tool. How do you train for that sort of thing? Do you have to have special certification? Well, we're all commercial pilots, for one. We're, we're all uh, commercially rated from the FAA. We all have pesticide licenses, and uh, there are a few schools out there that offer some training specifically on how to, how to fly ag, but generally speaking, you, you start as an apprentice. That could be on the order of uh, three to five years to get really going yeah. in it. Yeah. And so, you did you always want to do this, or you became a pilot first? Well, then... I always wanted to fly airplanes. Okay. Ever since I was little, I had it in me for some reason. I always would point at airplanes, and I always wanted to fly, but I never knew I was going to be doing this. And I am so glad that I found this because not only do I have the pilot's dream of flying the airplane, but I get to do something at the end of the day that is tangible. And that makes me feel really good at the end of the day to know that I contributed uh, in just the state of Washington, spray products that will go globally. In fact, quick story. Okay. I was with um, <laughs> my wife and we are in Savannah. Yeah. And we went to a Five Guys Burgers and Fries for the first time. We had never seen one before. And we okay. walked into the Five Guys Burgers and Fries and I was like, this is pretty cool. And we ordered our burger and everything and we happened to look up on the wall and I saw a sign that said, these potatoes for these french fries were from Pasco, Washington. Yay! And I just about fell over. <laughs> I was from the opposite coast. I was 3,000 miles away right. from home. And I thought to myself, if I didn't spray those potatoes, I know who did. It was my buddy Nick or my buddy Mark. Uh -huh. That was a really good feeling. Well, Gavin, thank you so much for having us out here and taking us up in one of your planes. And it looks like you have a pretty fun job. To find out more about other types of food grown in Washington, head to our website at wagrown.com. Right after the break, we'll head to the steam plant to cook up some delicious barley quinoa cakes that will make your mouth water. And we're in the kitchen with Kristen using butternut squash to make some delicious filling barley risotto. We're back in downtown Spokane at Steam Plant Square, where Stax is serving up a variety of locally sourced dishes in a creative atmosphere. It truly is a beautiful space. But I wondered, what else makes Stax so special? Chef Andrew explains. It's a very unique, I mean, we have the restaurant here, we have our own brewery on site. 
it's such a fun experience being able to use beer that we produce on right. site from locally sourced ingredients yes. to create wonderful food that people come in and eat. And it sounds like customers agree. Great food, really good beer. I love the atmosphere. I love uh, bringing my people down here. The food is great, the beer is fantastic. Uh, whenever I get down here, it's just like nothing but love, you know? Now we're off to the kitchen to make some of Andrew's tasty barley quinoa cakes. So, how do we start? Well, first thing, we have to start by cooking the barley. Okay. Cooking barley, use one part of barley. Uh huh. And I'm using a pearl barley that's been hauled to Cut, make it cook a little faster. Okay. Just pure barley takes a long time to cook, it. and the mouth feels a little. So look off for people. whole. For curled barley. Curled yes. barley. Curled barley. Yes. Okay. We add in three cups of vegetable stock, place on the stove to bring to a boil, and cover until cooked through. Okay. Yeah. So while that cooks, then we've got some chopping to do. Yes, right? we do. Yes. Can you give me a do. little lesson in oh, chopping? Oh, definitely. Definitely. I need all the help I can get. All right. I'll grab my knife. Okay. First thing we need to do. We're adding in some scallions to the cakes themselves. Lovely. It'll give a little okay. flavor. First part is, how do you hold your yeah, knife how right? Do, well, I hold All it right. like this, but... Well, the way we do in kitchens, oh. choke up on the knife like okay. this, making sure we're keeping our fingers up on the blade, not oh. underneath the blade. Right. Underneath. And if it's more comfortable for you having your finger there, all right, but I do suggest having it back like this. Okay. We're gonna chop up the scallion. And the way we do that, the crab claws, we right. call it. Okay. We just start slicing. After cutting the scallions, we chop some thyme and oregano. That looks so nice yes. already, nice and fresh. Yes, yes. We add in the cooked barley and quinoa and stir to combine. Just kind of toss that together, break it up with a fork a little bit. Get that some good looks gorgeous. Top. Yeah. We chop and saute some mushrooms, then add to our barley quinoa mixture. Give that a toss. You smell that. Love. I do, and it smells yeah. so good. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love it. We add in eggs and panko to bind the mixture, then allow to cool. All right, time to form the barley quinoa cakes. You've already have formed a, some yes, here. We they have look some awfully in. perfect. Don't they? They Don't do. They How did how you we, do that? Well, I could uh, say it's just magic and skill, right. but I will show you we do have the a tool we use. Little, yes. Like a cookie cutter. A little cookie cutter, I yes. Know. After gloving up, we form some patties. Make sure you make a nice ball, squeeze it together. Kind of like doing a hamburger patty. Sure. Yes. Yeah. So then what we'll do, push it down to where it gets all through there, getting a nice flat surface. Yeah. Nice, gently pull it out. Voila. Presto. Let's see. Let's see how you do. Okay. Getting it a nice even pressure all through. Okay. Pushing that, yeah, you're getting the idea. All right, oh, ho, ho. look at that one, yeah. beautiful. Hey, you're hired. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we dredge the cakes in panko, then pan sear. Carefully placing it in. Here it sizzles. Yes. And then how long on each side? About one to two minutes, yes. Okay. And let those just rest a moment. We toss some greens in raspberry vinaigrette, then plate. So one, two. Okay. And three. And let's put just a bit of the greens on each one. Oh, I like that idea. Yes. I like to get height on food. Uh huh. Yes. And now the taste. Oh, okay. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. mm. What do you think? I love it. All right. Oh. It's amazing. I like how earthy and all the texture mm -hmm. that you have with the barley. And it holds its texture. That's what's so right. cool about barley. I love this stuff. Andrew, thank you so much. You're welcome. I love it. Yeah. yeah. To get Chef Andrew's recipe for barley quinoa cakes, go to our website at wagrown.com. Did you know there are at least three health-related reasons for consuming beer? If asked about wine, you might mention red wine and heart health. Beer's health benefits are less publicized, but equally appealing. One, beer provides small yet respectable sources of numerous B vitamins and minerals like magnesium, phosphorus, and potassium, which are contributed by the variety of barley, wheat, and hops used to make beer. Two. Beer made from barley contains a small amount of an important soluble fiber called beta-glucan that is helpful for cholesterol management. And three, 
Beer is rich in the trace mineral silicon, which according to a 2009 Tufts University study, helped improve hip bone density in men. I would have volunteered for that study. Beer and barley have a long history with recorded beer production going back about 5,000 years and barley domestication nearly 10,000 years ago. As a food source, barley kernels are first polished or pearled by having their husks removed. Hulling doesn't change its soluble fiber content, which the FDA allows barley to boast may reduce the risk of heart disease. Barley is also a rich source of the trace mineral chromium, which helps control blood sugar levels. In Washington, our unique growing soil transfers important nutrients from barley, wheat, and hops into beer, soup, stews, patties, cakes, and salads. So now, when you're sipping some suds along with your beef and barley soup, you can healthily stand glass to glass with wine. When you think of barley, you probably think of beer, and for good reason. I'm here at the Steam Plant Brewing Company and Pub in Spokane, Washington, where they craft a variety of beers, not only with barley, but with wheat. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a barley beer and a wheat beer and see if our patrons know the difference. We've got two beers here in front of you. One's made with wheat, one is made with barley. I'm gonna have you guys taste them both, enjoy, and then I'd like you to tell me which is which. Give them a try, let me know what you think. Here he goes. That's beer one. What do you think? Pretty good. Pretty yeah. good? Yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty good? Pretty yeah. good. Beer one's not bad. I like um, it. Tastes, it's got a little bit of bitterness to it. Yeah. What do you taste it? Taste hops. Well, let's try beer two. Tell me what you think. That's got a bit of spiciness to it. Okay, very nice. Yeah. Spiciness. Yeah. That's maybe a good description. Sort of roast, maybe. <laughs> maybe it's roasted. <laughs> it's roasted? What's roasted? This one's the wheat one. That one's the wheat one. And why do you say that? It's got that German beer flavor. <laughs> that German. It tastes it's, like German beer. It's got the lederhosen on. You're right. It does. That's You're correct. Right. That's there it. There you go. He nailed it. It tastes like a wheat, but sure. with a hint of barley. Almost? I don't know. I just wheat with a hint of barley. I don't know. I can't. Is that right? The opposite. Opposite. Wow. I think beer two is your wheat beer. Okay, and that would be your barley, barley beer. Yeah. That's correct. That one's a little light for me. That one, a little, little bit more substance, maybe, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and you say that one's the barley. I think that's the barley. Okay, yeah. guess what? Sorry. Really? Swap it around. Really? There you go. That's your barley, and that's your wheat. Taste that barley. Oh, there, yeah. <laughs> there it is. The <laughs> there yeah. it is. Once yeah. you know, once yeah. somebody oh, said yeah. something, you're yeah. like, there's the barley. Yep. Yep. Speaking of, I'm going to yep. go get myself one. All right. All right. <laughs> We've enjoyed some delicious barley cakes, and now how about a little something to wash it down with? I'm here at Elysian Brewery in Georgetown, so come along, let's take a look. I met with CEO Joe Basaka for a tour and an explanation on how his beer is made. So the brew process starts uh, over there with the mill. Oh, okay. We're basically taking uh, Washington uh, State two, two row uh, pale malt. We're grinding it in that mill, we're adding specialty malts, and then when we're ready, We'll build a base water in this vessel. Wow. Uh, about two thirds of the way up. Drop the grain into the base water, making sort of a loose oatmeal mash. Oh. It's then run through a series of stations to mix, strain, boil, and add the hops to create wort. At the same time, they take a yeast culture to grow it over a period of 60 hours. Back here, this is where we ferment. So we start out by adding yeast into the bottom of the cone, and then we'll fill the wort coming out of the brew house up into the tanks. And a matter of fact, what you're seeing up in that brew house is going directly in this vessel. Once the fermentation is complete, the beer is run through a centrifuge to separate the solids and lighten the beer. CO2 is added for carbonation, and the beer is ready to be bottled, packaged, and distributed. I asked Joe, what makes a Legion beer unique? We tend to experiment a lot. Last year, we did 104 different beers. We have a team of fantastic brewers. They get together every few weeks and we experiment with things, uh, see what sticks, and then kind of try to bring that fun that we've had and put it forward out in the market to let people try some of the great stuff that we do. 
I asked Joe about the importance of Northwest-grown ingredients in the production of good beer. Uh, the Northwest region as a whole is set up to be the exact climate to actually grow this stuff in. The Washington State barley that we wind up getting is probably the best out there. Hop and barley growing regions uh, tend to be the same climate that you find wines grown in. Uh, so the, the Washington State wines that have taken off so much of that same land, we actually fight for, you know? <laughs> Right, and we know that from just touring sure. uh, the, the Northwest ourselves. We right. see grapes on one side of the road and then barley yep, on the other. Yep, barley on the other and hop, hop vines growing right, from, the, right. from the rafters. Right. Would you say it's actually one of the secrets to your well, I don't success? want to give all the trade secrets away. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Where can people find your beers? Major grocery store chains. Uh, we're in things like 7-Elevens and AMPMs. We're in a bottle shop, finer restaurants and bars around town. There's an iPhone app that we have, an Elysian app that you can click on and it will use your GPS to tell you where Elysian is currently available within a one mile radius of you. Oh, okay, great. And it actually works. Touring Elysian showed me the importance of Northwest ingredients used in brewing. Not only did we learn a lot on our tour, we tasted some great beer. Joe. Thank you so much. My pleasure. This was great. Cool. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Lime. <laughs>
He's a good helper. He is a great yeah. helper. Everyone likes to be in the kitchen. Yeah. I just think it's such a fun place to be with my family. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Lots of memories happen in the kitchen. And at the end of the day, I mean, I like to cook for my family to show love. Once our squash is cut into pieces, we toss it with some olive oil and cinnamon and roast it until tender. Our butternut squash is roasted and smells delicious. It looks beautiful too. So what about our, how's it going over there? Think it's ready. Think it's ready? Think it's ready. Okay, <laughs> that's what I like to hear. All right, let me grab it. <laughs> We dump our risotto into a bowl, adding some Parmesan cheese and our squash. <laughs> okay, we're ready to eat. Ready? I like, I like it when she says that, huh? We're ready to ready eat. Ready to eat. <laughs> <laughs> now it's time to dish up. We top our risotto with some toasted walnuts and give it a taste. Mmm. Mm. Good work. Mm. Mm, my word. Mm. You're the best stir ever. You're a good helper in the kitchen. Thank you for coming. Good stuff. <laughs> he can't talk. Welcome. His mouth is full. <laughs> He's so polite. <laughs> to get the full recipe for Kristen's barley and butternut risotto, visit our website at wagrown.com. Barley is an important ingredient for making great food and great beer. That's it for this edition of Washington Grown. Thanks for joining us.